Hey guys, today's Cakewalk by Bain Lab tutorial is going to be covering automation. Now, normally when you think of automation, the first thing that comes to mind is volume automation. However, within Cakewalk by Bain Lab, you can actually automate nearly anything on a track. To show you exactly what I'm talking about, let's open up this panel right here, which is your automation lanes. Now by clicking this, it essentially opens up what looks like to be another audio track. However, on this track, there's no audio actually being stored, but rather it's just information that's being fed to wherever you send it. In this instance, I have it going to a VX64 vocal strip, and I have it specifically set on the delay level of this particular plugin that is here. Now, as you can see, the delay level as of right now is very low. If I was to scroll over to a point like, say, right here, as I begin to move, you can see that the level goes up. So essentially what I've done is I've created an automation for this level to go up in volume so that you'll be able to hear it more within a mix. Let's see how you can use this creatively in the context with the mix. There will be loud music coming in three, two, and one. So essentially what I did was I automated the level so that the delay that I have dialed in here on the VX64 vocal strip will only be heard at specific times when I want it to be heard. By doing this I can also have it very low beneath the vocals during the entirety of the song and raise it or lower it during specific points in the song. So essentially you're doing the same thing as volume automation but you're doing it with other plugin instances. Now to actually show you how this works I'm going to create a new lane for volume. So by clicking on this plus symbol down here I can add an automation lane. By default it almost always goes straight to volume anyway. Now it would be notable to mention that when an automation lane is active and you have your track set to read here, that it will automatically read the automation before you do any kind of anything manually up here with the volume. So even if I was to set this up to plus four, when I go to hit play, it's automatically going to take the volume back down to where the automation lane is. So the only way to fix that after inserting an automation lane is to actually automate where I want that volume to be. So if I wanted that to be louder as of right now, I would simply just need to click on my move tool and actually move this to where I wanted it. But as of right now, we're gonna leave this on minus five and I'm gonna show you exactly how to insert points and to move them. Okay, so at the very beginning of the volume automation lane that we've created, you'll notice right here that there's a little keyframe. If you're used to working with video editing programs, specifically um, Premiere Pro or something like that, you've probably already used keyframes in times past. This is essentially the very same thing. I'm gonna select my smart tool again. You'll notice that there's a pencil that comes over whenever I hover on this line. By clicking in an area where this pencil is at, I create essentially a keyframe. And I can do this in numerous locations. By doing this, I can then take one of these keyframes and drag it up or down to change the volume. If at any time I have added a keyframe that I don't want to be there, I can simply hover over it and right click to delete the node. Now, if at any time I've created a envelope that I don't want to be there at all, I can simply right click on this and delete the envelope completely. Let's go ahead and add the automation lane back for the volume. And I'm gonna show you some other things that can be useful as well. You'll notice on the left hand side that I have the automation read that I can enable or disable. And I also have a automation write. This can be useful for whenever you're wanting to actually do things on the fly. So if I have this set to write, I can actually take this while it's playing and adjust the volume 
and it will automatically make keyframes for each one of my volume changes. And now you'll notice there's a red box that's around my volume. So while this is playing, I can now adjust volumes. Now the automation that was just performed can either be done like I just did with my mouse, or you can also do it if you're after a more tactile feel with a control surface of your choice or even with a MIDI keyboard if that option is available as well. So in order to enable my MIDI keyboard so that I can use it as a control surface, I'm simply gonna go up to Edit and Preferences, Control Surfaces, and you'll see here that my MIDI keyboard is already active as a possible control surface. This also tells me which color that the interface is going to recognize it as. I'm just going to go ahead and set that to red as it'll probably be more usable. Okay, so now I'm going to hit apply and close. So now to use my MIDI keyboard as a control surface, I can either adjust one of the knobs or the faders to adjust the volume on the fly by simply going up to the volume option here, which is where the automation lane is set to right. And I can right click here and you go to remote control. Now within here, I can simply click learn and I'm going to use one of the faders. I'm gonna move it up and down and now hit okay. So now you should notice here as I move my fader up and down, it's also adjusting my volume. So essentially I've just set my MIDI keyboard up to be a control surface within Cakewalk by BandLab. So I'm gonna set it back to where, close to where it was, which was negative five. And now as it's playing, I can use this fader to adjust those volumes. And all of the automation for that volume adjustment will be automatically written into the automation take lane. Observe. Okay, so now I'd like to remove this automation lane because obviously I don't want it to look like the wave. So I've removed the automation lane now, and this is just one other way that you can actually use automation in order to benefit your mixes. Now, aside from adding effects to vocals, automation can also be used for other things within a mix that can help to greatly improve it as well. Here's a good example of where automation can also be used as well. In this particular rap song, I have overdubs that need to be sang alongside of the actual verse parts. These overdubs, however, there are certain syllables, there are certain sentences and even phrases that need accentuated without being too overbearing. And so by using automation, I can get them to poke through at specific times and then fall back behind the line where they need to be. Here's a good example of this. Take a listen. Loud noise in three, two, one. I've had this dream all my life, it's been a long time coming But now that I'm ripe, it's time to hit the road running This is something in my soul, not a service to be sold Now I'm focused on the goal of who I'm becoming Okay, so that is the overdubs just behind the vocal Now here's where I'm going to actually incorporate the volume and the delay automation Listen to how it helps the vocal on the overdub to set apart and to stand out I don't want to go back to the old me again I want to be a man of God and be free of sin So I watch what I'm watching, who I'm speaking with I focus on the Lord of this earth who I'm believing in I buy your words in my heart, my heart's desire is your will You can take me higher So as you can see with the automation that's in, added into it I can help to really accentuate certain aspects of the song that need to be accentuated when I want them to be. Very simply and very easy. Now I'm going to utilize this blank track here at the bottom just to kind of show you exactly what some of the controls are for the automation should you so decide to use them. You'll notice whenever I pull up this menu here, which is also up at the top of the page, However, if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can actually click the scroll wheel itself and pull this menu up. The smart tool for most things does the trick. However, there may be specific times when you want to use 
the editors also available here. So with the pen tool, for instance, I can click and hold and draw in automation lanes. And then with this eraser tool, I can actually go back and select single nodes and delete them individually. Or if I wanted to, I can even click and drag over an entire area and delete it as well. Having created a bunch of nodes, as you can see here, I can also use this tool and it will allow me to move individual nodes or select several at once. However, all of this can be achieved with the smart tool. You just have to know where to hover if you want something done. For instance, when the smart tool looks like this, it's now going to click and drag us a, a whole section. But I can actually go down here and select only a certain section and essentially do the same thing. If nothing is selected, this portion of the tool automatically thinks that you're wanting to move everything, which is not always the case. By clicking on a single node, I can also do this. And then also with the node selected in the dark green, I can even hit the delete button to get rid of that node as well, so that I don't have to go into a separate menu. Now, if at any time I've created a volume automation, and let's say I don't want it for volume anymore, I can also simply right click here and assign this envelope to something different. Now let's go over some of the options that you have with specific plugins. In order to automate anything on a track, you actually have to have a plugin instance to automate. If there is not one present, when you click this box down, you're going to have your volume, your mute, and your pan. However, you can also automate anything that's on the Pro Channel as well. And that's where the PC, Track Compressor, PC standing for Pro Channel, Track EQ, and so on and so forth. You can actually enable them, disable them, or you can adjust settings for the input, attack and release times, the dry and wet signal, which greatly improves your flexibility. If the track just so happens to have a send as well, let's say we want to send this to the backup vocals. Now that I've created a send, I also have an option within my automation for send levels and send a pan as well. Okay guys, so this has been a brief overview of automation within Cakewalk by BandLab and some of the usefulness. Be creative and use this for whatever processes that you feel like it would be useful for in your mixes and masters. If you have any questions of something that maybe I have not covered, go ahead and leave a comment below and either I myself or someone else within this community will get back with you and probably give you some really solid advice. Also, I would like to make mention that there is a Facebook page for the Home Studio Simplified channel. That is facebook.com forward slash home studio simplified. I've also created a group called HSS Collab. And within this group, it's going to be basically exclusive content just for those members of that group. I'm going to have exclusive giveaways. And I'm also even going to have live videos coming soon where I'll be doing mixing training and teachings in a live atmosphere where you can actually interact with me and ask questions on the fly. As usual, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to give me a like. If there was something that maybe I could have done differently, go ahead and hit the dislike. Also, be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. You can either do that with the watermark at the right hand bottom corner of the screen or just by simply clicking the subscribe button on the channel. Make sure you click the bell icon as well so that every time I upload a new video, you'll be the first to be notified. Until next time, guys, you have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you later.